So in this final video on macroevolution, we're going to be looking at some final genetics components to the idea of speciation. And we'll entitle this final flowchart, Genetics of Speciation. In this flowchart, we're going to be focusing ourselves on one key example that shows us the big idea that evolution has. And that, that idea is simply that evolution acts on variation and thus evolution acts on genetic change. Genetic change is the key idea that we have to focus on when we're, fo when we're trying to figure out speciation because it's sort of a precursor. It's a prerequisite, something that's absolutely necessary. But this is facts that we already know. This is Darwinian evolution. How does this play a role in macroevolution in the scope of this lecture? The better question to ask is not whether or not genes play a role, but it's actually how many genes are necessary. How many we can put this as a question, how many genes have to change, let's say, because we need a genetic composition, a change in genetic composition, how many of those genes have to change for a new species to develop entirely, aka how many of those genetic changes do we have to see for a new species to macro evolve, to develop. Okay, so what we see is, from this, there's not a set number. We've noticed from experimental uh, overall processes and procedures that we've seen is that there are no set numbers of genes that need to be uh, absolutely changed for a new species to develop. Basically, the answer to this question is quite simply uh, the following. It's whatever causes reproductive isolation. However many genes need to change, it doesn't matter as long as it causes reproductive isolation. And we're going to be seeing that in a very dramatic example of one gene changing. And that dramatic example will be seen in Japanese snails. So we're going to write EX for example, and this will be in Japanese snails. A very obvious and very dramatic example of the genetics of speciation. So, in Japanese snail, we have the following criteria. We understand that in these snails, only one gene, just one gene out of all of the genes within a Japanese snail, only one gene um, needs to change. And this change is what's going to literally cause speciation because it will cause reproductive isolation. Speciation, macroevolution, is mainly driven by reproductive isolation. That's the theme of this lecture, and we're going to prove that one final time here. So let's look at the story of the Japanese snail. We said that one gene needs to change. Specifically, that one gene we're going to write down um, is probably pretty important in terms of what it does and it must relate to reproduction somehow and it does that one gene controls something called shell spiral the way that the shell spirals the orientation at which it spirals itself doesn't seem that important doesn't seem that obvious that this is directly related to reproductive isolation but it's so critical in the Japanese snail that if we change it if we change this gene so that the spiral let's say is mutated and if that spiral is in the opposite direction let's say if in opposite direction that spiral if we move that direction of the spiral simply by changing one gene, we notice that the actual reproductive structures of this organism, the actual genitalia of the organism, are not going to be oriented the correct way. Not oriented for any possible mating event. This is critical in speciation. This is what we've been talking about over and over and over again. And this is exemplified through simply one gene changing. How many genes have to change for a new species to develop? Well, that question is only relative to whatever causes reproductive isolation. In the Japanese snail, only one gene needs to be changed because you're going to absolutely change the way reproduction happens because you're completely changing the orientation for a possible mating event. You are literally creating through one gene change a strong and powerful mechanical barrier to this uh, reproduction event. So there's a mechanical barrier caused by such a gene change. So this is, an, a, this is a very um, uh, extreme example of how many genes need to change. This is just one. In most cases we can say 
that in um, other species, you may need to change many more genes. It's just an important thing to note. You may need to change many more genes. This was just one contrived example to drive home a point that it's only a matter of whatever causes reproductive isolation changes and this is only one gene that's necessary for that. In other species you may have many more genes needed um, so causes uh, one other species may need to change many more genes uh, to change reproductive isolation. To change uh, reproductive or not even change let's say to cause reproductive isolation. So that's the end of that story here. Overall, I want to conclude by reminding ourselves, after all of these speciation videos, uh, the idea of macroevolution as a whole. This will just be boxed down on the side here. Macroevolution, if we go back to our original understanding of it, is the following. Macroevolution results and relies on the fact that there are major events, okay, major events, that's why we call it macro, major events over a long period of time. Now, what I mean by long period of time, it does not mean that speciation itself is not, you know, necessarily rapid. We have an experiment that shows how fast speciation can be. But on average, we actually notice that evolution will take about six and a half million years. That's a long period of time to evolve a new species. So that's a big number, 6.5 million years. And that sort of shows us on average, if we don't look at extreme examples, like in that um, example of the wild sunflower, we notice that it takes a long time and major events are necessary for that to happen and this all is as a result from a new species that forms and the new species forms from a common ancestor. So just keep these big pictures ideas in your mind as you continue to study macroevolution. It's a powerful process. It involves a lot of different components like speciation, it involves many different ideas of reproductive isolation mechanisms, both prezygotic and postzygotic, and it involves those allopatric and sympatric um, speciation events that we went over. All in all, macroevolution is a large-scale evolution process governed by all of these things that we've covered. But Keep in mind the big picture is to create major changes, and these major changes are created in order to create new species altogether. And again, speciation is necessary and there because you do not want this intermingling to happen. You do not want species mating with other species that are not supposed to be mating. Thus, you have those reproductive isolation mechanisms there to prevent any sort of haphazard, unnecessary macroevolution, let's say. And that concludes macroevolution lecture.